and it's not just like physical repetition too, you know, it's, you, you do the mental repetition because your body can only handle so much. And they say like doing that first person visualization helps instill some of those neural pathways so that you can actually do it physically when it's time. So it's putting the mental reps and the physical reps. Welcome to the Science of Building Champions podcast, where your host, Don Heatrick chats with top-level fighters and coaches, diving into their stories to discover what makes champions. Today, I'm excited to be speaking with Janet Todd, the two-time Pan American Muay Thai champion training out of Boxing Works in Southern California, and currently the reigning one kickboxing atom weight world champion. Janet, thanks for taking the time for to, to chat ahead of your one atom weight kickboxing world title against Pet Gija. Um, and I know you've said that this is going to be your final fight and that you plan to retire after this one. So, you know, what does this fight mean to you knowing that it's your farewell performance? You know, I've been telling people this, but I haven't thought too much about, you know, what happens after because I'm so focused on the fight. But I think one of the lessons learned that I had from my last fight was I put so much pressure on myself to win that it almost took the fun away. And, mm. you know, I, I do this for, I do this for fun because I love it. So I kind of changed my perspective and my mindset for this fight and, you know, really had fun with my journey this time, adding new elements and layers into my, you know, my toolbox. So it's, it's been fun. <laughs> It's good to hear that you've enjoyed your training leading up to this one as well, because it, it can happen, can't it? Where it's just a bit of a grind that it, it's just the, almost the same old routine again. Here I go. But yeah, it's, it's, it's great to hear that off the back of that last fight, your, your attitude has kind of changed and that it's brought that spark back into your training. Um, I mean, in terms of a, an opponent, I mean, both you and your coach, Brian Popejoy, you're both kind of tacticians and I'd, I'd love to know, you know, Petjija, she's that aggressive come forwards, wants to get to that sort of medium and close range and get a, literally get her hands mm -hmm. on you, body into the head. That's going to be what she's going to try and do. Um, how, how do you feel your style can solve that puzzle? What is it you've been, you've been looking to address? Um, yeah, without giving too much away yeah, of my game of plan. <laughs> <laughs> broad, broad strokes, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, we are, you know, expecting her to want to come forward, um, you know, get low, because that's what she did with um, uh, Mexin. Mm. You know, Mexin likes to fight a little bit tall, and she was able to get under uh, under her center of gravity to be able to land those shots where, you know, Mexin's shots were flying over her head or just ineffective because of where, you know, where she was standing in respect to Pet Gija. So, um, we're making adjustments to, to make sure that that doesn't happen. And so that I can take advantage of the openings when she comes in, um, uh, boxing. Yeah. It's going to be a really interesting fight to watch because you, you do seem to have the, the natural attributes to, to be the antidote for that style. If you get to play the fight, you wait the way you want to. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this, how this one goes. Yeah, and, and props to Brian Popejoy. Um, he's always the the genius behind, you know, not only me but Jackie as well. Yes. Um, you know, helping us come up with game plans and and really coming up with the drills, the pad work to help us enforce that into our instincts. I mean, that's not an easy thing to do. I always appreciate, you know, his thought process and his like meticulous eye to see some of these things because sometimes I don't even see it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But, and it's, it is having the experience, but also that, that third person perspective that has that more, mm -hmm. a, a, an overview of what, what's going on rather than that sort of tunnel vision a bit more. And I've, I've yeah. actually spoken to Brian before on a previous podcast and yeah, the, the stuff he shared, his, his attitude to everything is really, really good. And like you say about spotting what habits need to be drilled in to now come out on autopilot under pressure without you having to think about it and and drilling that between far out from the fight getting close to the fight and making sure that repetition's happening there and almost i guess disguising the repetition so that you're doing it as many different ways as possible but it's still soaking in um really really important 
Yes, yes. <laughs> and it's not just like physical repetition too, you know, it's you, you do the mental repetition because your body can only handle so much. And they say like doing that first person visualization helps instill some of those neural pathways so that you can actually do it physically when it's time. So it's putting the mental reps and the physical reps. Yeah, I, I know that there's research that shows that those, those same, like you say, the motor pattern pathways all activate whether you physically do it or whether you're just visualizing you're doing it. Or even those, the motor neurons of watching someone else does it, it still fires those same pathways. So even just watching even footage back of your, your own training, you're going to be you're going to be firing that stuff. Oh, it's fascinating all that. <laughs> yeah, so I read a I read a book that talked about it and it and it's a really good example. Like you, have you like visualize yourself chewing into a lemon? You all of a sudden get those same like ooh like feelings in your mouth. So it's doing that, that same type. So it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. <laughs> so many places you can take it. But you you also mentioned the the mental side of things there, and you're talking more about the the mental side of the the um, the movement patterns and the the techniques as such. But being your farewell fight, um, do you feel your mental focus is going to be different for this one? Or how do you plan to stay composed? Uh, you know, like I mentioned, I'm not really thinking about retirement right now. I'm really focused on the fight, so my mental repetitions are of the fight, <laughs> not. A after got you and like i said I, I think because i've taken some of that pressure off and having more fun integrating these new skills in it's it it's it's a different i'd say a different approach that i've taken you know in my last fight so when you're having more fun it's it's different <laughs> yeah yeah that do you know what there's I'm thinking about the training now again and the, and the research sort of showing about deliberate repetition and, you know, how you anchor those, those new skills, mm -hmm. but it's that can kind of get kind of funneled down the route of it needs to be perfect practice and rehearsing too many mistakes become a problem and you're starting to bank bad habits. But the, the antidote to that is, is rather than things being having to be, perfectly repeated in sequence in timing all the time that it's playing and actually experimenting and, and little deviations within a theme um yes. that, that yes. actually accelerates your progress far more so rather than thinking of it as deliberate practice and going out and and this needs to be right it needs to be right get the right stuff repeated over and over it is actually about having a structure to what you're doing and staying within that and playing within that and and being yes. willing to have yes differences and oh that wasn't quite right but this is better and having fun with it yeah i like how you put it it's it's having a sort of structure but being able to play within that structure you like you said like you can't do it well for, for me when i have to when i think about drilling i can't think about doing it perfectly if i think, think it causes me to really criticize myself causes me to freeze up and I don't think about anything else except for, oh, I sucked at this. Oh, I sucked at this. And it's okay to strive for perfection, but in my mind, it's like, okay, well, how can I do this a little bit better? Or how can I, how can I, you know, get myself out of this position to get somewhere more off a little bit of structure, but being able to play a little bit within that structure. So you can, I mean, the real world is, you know, a, B, and C. It's like, you know, Z back to G. And you need to be able to be fluid and adapt to that. So, yeah. Yeah. That it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting to hear. I mean, and, and I'm thinking about your, your journey so far. And I mean, you started off, it was gymnastics and cheerleading, wasn't it? And cardio <laughs> kickboxing. And, and you weren't looking to compete at all, really, initially. And then you found Muay Thai and amateur Muay Thai and, and now, of course, professional, world-class Muay Thai and kickboxing. You know, how did you end up becoming such a competitor when that wasn't what you set out to do? Because I'm a competitive person. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, even in school, I've always, you know, wanted to do the best, wanted to be the best. 
I think I just have that competitive nature. And then Muay Thai and kickboxing um, just brought out another aspect of it. Um, I love the challenges that it brought in. I'm not a natural, definitely not a natural. It took me a lot of repetitions, a lot of work um, to be able to do what I do today. <laughs> and I think I, you know, that's the part of the process that I enjoy. You know, anything that's meaningful and worth getting isn't easy. So when you're able to see all that progress, it just makes everything so, so much more worth it, you know? Um, yeah. But I think the real like spark that I, that I had, that I wanted to actually do this professionally and, you know, strive to be the best in this craft was um, I did an IFMA tournament. Uh, God, I don't remember when it was. Maybe it was like 2015 or something. And um, IFMA brings all like world-class athletes together um, to do like a, a tournament for a week. And, you know, that's when I realized, hey, you know, I think I can do this. I think I can, I can, you know, compete with the best of them. So I'm going to go after it. And I think that's, that's what did it for me. Yeah. And here I am. <laughs> so, and this is where you ended up. Yeah. And, and. I, I want to touch on as well that, you know, outside of, of Muay Thai, outside of kickboxing and all, and all that training, you know, you, you've, um, you've had a, a professional career as well in, in, in aerospace, haven't you? And yeah, you've, yeah. And, and I think that's for me, I mean, my, my original background is from mechanical engineering as well. And I've, I know that's really oh. flavored how I, approached my own training when I was competing, but also how I coach others, certainly, you know, the way I structure things and, and the sort of logic to what I do. Um, how do you feel that that has, um, influenced how you've trained? Yeah, I, I think, I think like you're, like you said, um, it exercises more of like my analytical skills and breaking down things and how I want to build up my skills for, you know, progressively rather than go from, you know, step one to a hundred. Um, I think that's where more of like the engineering mindset because, you know, helped me. Um, but other than that, you know, you don't want the engineering mindset to, to come with you within the ring because it's a complete opposite mindset you have there. Because <laughs> in the ring, you want instincts. You don't want to be analyzing. <laughs> yes. But I think what, um, I guess going, going the other direction, what, you know, competing in Muay Thai and kickboxing has taught me in the engineering field is to, is to be vulnerable and be willing to make mistakes and not have to be perfect. And, you know, being able to, yeah, have that vulnerability to show, Hey, here's, here's my initial solution. I know it's not perfect, but we'll, you know, work at it to make it something good. <laughs> and, and I think that's what Muay Thai and kickboxing has really taught me to to be, you know, in my engineering field is more vulnerable and willing to make mistakes and not be hard on myself for it. Yeah, I completely agree. I I know that from from my background in engineering is kind of it was more like there's a right answer and a wrong answer, and it was it was very binary a lot of the time with that, um, and it did kind of encourage that overly perfectionist approach and almost and mm -hmm. certain characters to hide up mistakes rather than say mm -hmm. this has gone wrong how can how can we fix this make this better and move on from there um and yeah i i can completely see how that can sort of back drive from experimentation in the ring um where it, there's 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 win or lose of course maybe a draw but there's there's so many ways of yeah. arriving at a solution um and yeah, some, some are better than others, and, but there's always something to work on. For, even if you win the fight, isn't there, between one and the next? It's like, what can I go away with and become a better fighter for the next one, regardless of what the decision was? Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> I'd love to know what you think are the most important traits or characteristics that a champion must have. Um, God, I feel like there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Definitely, you know, uh, you know, people don't like the word positive because it, 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 you know, induces emotion and you don't want emotion in things, but I, I like it. I, I think a positive mindset has, you know, really helped me a lot. Um, knowing that 
even if I wasn't able to do it yesterday or the day before or a month ago, it's something that I'm working towards and eventually I can, you know, get better at. Um, it's the perseverance and persistence. Um, like I said, when you fail, you get back up and try it again, try it a different way. <laughs> um, it's not just because you fail once doesn't mean it's a, a end all solution. <laughs> There's always a way you just got to figure it out. Um, and just courage too. um, courage to be able to put yourself out there. Uh, I don't think people realize it takes courage to go out in the ring. Um, and you're literally putting yourself out there for everybody to, to watch and get entertained. And it takes, it takes courage. And you know what? Also another thing, it helps me for work because, you know, when I have to present in front of, you know, customers or, you know, internally, um, you know, what's, what's worse getting, getting hit in the ring or, you know, just talking to people <laughs> in a conference room. Certainly that, I mean, it's, yeah. Where's, where's the physical harm in this and, and the, uh, yeah. <laughs> potentially, you know, getting knocked out in front of everybody that that's gotta be the worst thing rather than standing up and presenting in front of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Well, not- you know, I've already lost, you know gotten bloodied lost in front of millions of viewers on you know amazon prime you know talking to a room full of you know engineers is not a big deal now <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, i bet you're involved with some pretty big projects though uh yeah probably you know not talk about certain projects that I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry not fishing for actual projects but I, there, there is that sort of um the, the the consequence of the size of the project and especially being you know like a military project or something like that and and how dependable your solution needs to be in these kind of situations as well there, there there's some pretty hefty um pressure on that so comparable to fighting i'd have said in, in a different way in a different way and like i said it's it's about you know being able to being able to make those little mistakes and work as a group to like fix it and find the better solution there's always a solution. You just you just need to keep at it. Yeah. Well, finally, Janet, if you were to give just one piece of advice to someone who wants to be as great as they can be, what would that one piece of advice be if you could boil it down to one thing? Oh, geez. Um, yeah, I, I, I really think it's, you know, about getting the courage to do to do the things that you might be afraid of um and if you love it it's worth it's it's worth doing it if you love something you know fear should you know it's better to do it than not do it at all it's it's like that that thing about love it's better to have loved than not loved at all and even if you fail it if you love something that much you know, you're capable of becoming better. So you just have to stay and you'll eventually get there and you'll realize it when you look back and see all the progress you made. Yeah. So, you know, if you love something, definitely go after it. That's definitely what I learned. (laughs) And like you say that you don't appreciate it at the time, how far you've come, but it's looking back, you realize, wow, that was worth sticking at. Yeah. 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 Especially (laughs) yeah, when, when it's something you're passionate about, it's not going to be easy, but it'll be so worth it in the end. Yeah. Well, thank you, Janet. I'm going to let you get away. Appreciate your time. And um, thanks for sharing some of your wealth of knowledge from all of that experience you've had at the top of the game. Um, and all the best in your final fight there against Petty Jar. And it's going to be a great, great watch and emotional, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I'm not going like to think about that right now (laughs) yeah Yeah, we'll we'll worry about that after the fight (laughs) you can follow janet on instagram at jm kokel and to follow boxing works gym at boxing works and check out coach brian popejoy's excellent content at brian popejoy and you'll find links for all of these with this episode Thanks for listening. If you found this valuable, please like, subscribe and share with someone else it could help too.
please give the podcast a review or comment below. We'd love to hear from you. As always, you can visit heatrick.com for more Muay Thai performance podcasts, videos, articles, and guides. Catch you next time.